Hi, today we will talk about sequential pattern mining. I will give a brief introduction to explain what it is. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, sequential pattern mining, we have published a survey called a survey of sequential pattern mining. And also, if you want to play with the algorithms for this, you can have a look at our SPMF library in Java, which is open source. It has a lot of algorithms and data sets. So let me give you a brief introduction. Uh, as you know, probably data mining, the goal of data mining is to discover or extract some useful knowledge from data. So if you have a lot of data, you want to analyze the data to learn something useful, uh, you can use the data mining, data mining algorithms. There are many types of data that we can analyze such as uh, graphs, relational databases, time series, sequences, and so on. In this presentation today, I will focus on analyzing a type of data that we find in many fields called discrete sequences. So that means some sequence of uh, symbols that we will, and we will analyze them to find some interesting patterns in it that can tell us something about the data. So what is a discrete sequence or just a sequence? A sequence is an altered list of symbols. Symbols means uh, anything. It could be not some numbers, but some symbols. So for example here, let me explain with some example. We have a sequence of items that are purchased by some customer over time. So for example, a sequence could be uh, to buy a computer, then buy a monitor, and then to buy a router, or to buy an apple, then a bread, and then some cake. So this is sequence of items, okay. It can also be other types of uh, symbols, such as the words. So here I have another example, a sequence of words, like, I go back home. It is a sentence, but also a sequence of words. Another example of sequence, it is a sequence of location visited by a car in a city, like if you drive. So the car goes from location A to B to F, and then to G. So this also, this kind of data, can be represented as a sequence. So today I want to talk about sequential pattern mining. It is a data mining task and the goal is to analyze a set of sequences. So you have sequences about shopping, uh, sequences of words or locations, and the goal will be to find the subsequences that appear many times in these sequences. So for example, if you have sequences of items bought by different customers, then you could find some sequence of products that the people like to buy. Maybe they buy milk, then the day after they like to buy bread and so on. So we could find some sequences to help to understand the behavior of the customers. Also, we could find the sequence of location that the people like to visit in a city. So it could be used for recommendation and so on. Or even we could find sequence of words that appear many times in a text to learn about the writing style of the author. So let me define, give you some definitions and then I will give you a formal definition of what is sequential pattern mining. Okay, so firstly, we say that we have a set of items, the set of our symbols in our data, okay? We will call this I. So if we take, again, the example of shopping, let's say we have a store with five different types of products. I will call them A, B, C, D. So the set I is A, B, C, D. A for apple, B for bread, C for cake. D for dates, and E for eggs. So those are called items. 
Now we have a second definition, item set. Item set means a set of items, okay? So we call any set of item that is a subset of I, we call this an item set. So here, for example, we have ABC. The set ABC means apple, bread, and cake. It contains three items, A, B, and C. Another example is the item set D and E. It contains two items, date and X. So it is important to note that an item set cannot contain the same item twice. So for example, we can have the item set D and E, but we cannot have D, E, E, E or D, D, E, E, and so on. This is forbidden. Also, in general, an item set that has K items, we say it is a K item set. So ABC is a three item set because it has three items. DE is a two item set and so on. So this is just some definition. Now let's continue. I will give you the definition of a sequence. What we call a sequence S is an ordered list of item sets that are ordered by, for example, by the time or other criteria. So here we have a sequence S that contains some item set X1, X2, until Xn. And each of these item set uh, X, uh, J, for example, is a subset of I. It is a set of items. So let me show you some example of sequence. So for example, here we have a sequence A and B together. That means at the same time or together, okay? Followed by another item set C. So for example, this could mean somebody buy apple and bread and then buy cake. But apple and bread are together. They are in the same item set. They are at the same time, okay? There's no order between A and B. They are together. Another example is the sequence A, A, C. That means, for example, to buy apple, then apple, and then cake. So what you can observe is that a sequence can contain the same items many times, like apple appear twice. But Apple cannot appear twice in the same item set, okay? So this what is important to know. Okay, so let's continue. Now, when we want to compare the sequence, we want to know if a sequence is contained in another sequence, if a sequence is a subsequence of another one. So here, we, we, I will explain what is a subsequence. And we use a special symbol here to indicate the relationship of subsequence. So let's say we have two sequences, SA and SB, defined as what you see here, okay? A1, A2, AR, B1, B2, BT. So we say that the sequence SA is included in SB, is a subsequence of SB, if it meets some uh, condition. The condition is, there must exist some numbers, R numbers, okay? We call I1, I2 to IR, and these numbers must be between 1 to T. So why 1 to T? 1 to t is the number of item set in the sequence B, okay? So, and then there's another condition. A1 must be contained in BI1. A2 must be contained in BI2. AR must be in BIR. So what does it mean? It means that SA is included in SB if a1 is included in some item set BI1. A2 is included in another item set BI2. But 
I1 must be before I2. Okay, so when SA appears in SB, is contained in SB, it must appear, but also it must follow the same order. So this is why we have this uh, complicated definition. So uh, if SA is included in SB, we write like this with this special operator. So maybe it's not so clear. So let me give you a few examples. Here we have the sequence AC together. We say it is included in the sequence that contains ABC in the same item set because AC is a subset of ABC. Okay, so this is clear. Now, another example, AC is not included in the sequence A followed by C. So this is also normal because here we have A and C together, but on the right, you have A followed by C. So it is not the same thing, okay. A third example, we have A followed by C is included in the sequence A, B together, followed by D, followed by B and C together. So this is okay, because we want to have A followed by C. So here we have A, and later we have C after. So the order is preserved. It is A and followed by C appear in that sequence. And the last one, we have A followed by C, is not included in the sequence A and C together, followed by D. Because in that sequence, A and C are at the same time. A is not before C, okay. So these are some examples to illustrate the definition, okay. So maybe the definition not so clear, but you can think about it and you will see it makes sense, okay. Like in the examples here. So let's continue. In sequential pattern money, the data that we have, we say it is a sequence database. A database that contains some records that are the sequences. So we say a database, we call it D. It will be a set of sequence, uh, S1, S2, until Sm. Uh, for example, at the bottom of the slide, I show you a database with four sequences, S1 to S4. The first sequence means A and B together, followed by C, followed by A. The sequence 2 means A followed by B, followed by C. The sequence 3, B followed by C, followed by D, and so on. Okay, so this database, what could it be? It could be, for example, the sequence about what the people buy in a store. So the first customer, S1, buy apple and bread, and then cake, and then apple. The customer do buy other products and so on. And now we can, we want to analyze this database to find some patterns in this, okay. But before I explain this, I need to show you some more definitions. Another important definition is the definition of support of a sequence. A support, the support means the frequency, how many times a sequence appear in a database. So the support just means the number of sequence that contain a sequence, let's say SA, okay. So we use this notation here, the support of SA is the cardinality of the set of sequence S. S is in the database and SA is a subsequence of S. So let me explain this with an example to make this very clear. Let's say we take the sequence A, only A. It has a support of three because A appear in three sequences of our database. It appear in S1, S2, and S4. So one, two, three, that means a support of three. Let's look at another example. 
Let's say we take the item B. The sequence would be the support is a 4 because B appear in the four sequences. Okay. So one thing that is important to know, B appear five times actually. Okay. But it is not the number of B that we want. We want to know the number of sequences that contain B and it is four. Okay. Another example, let's say we take the sequence A followed by B. This A followed by B has a support of one because it appears only in one sequence, the sequence two, A followed by B. This sequence does not appear in sequence one because we have A, B, but they are together, not one before the other, okay. I have another example, A and B together, it appear twice, the support, okay. So because A and B together appear in sequence one and sequence four. Okay, so this is some important definition. Now I can finally explain the problem of sequential pattern mining. The problem of sequential pattern mining has as input a database D and a parameter we call the threshold, the minimum support threshold, min sub, that is a number greater or equal to zero. And the goal is to find the output, the goal is to find all the sequential patterns that have a support greater or equal to the minimum. Okay. So we have a database, a parameter, the minimum support, and we want to find all the patterns that appear at least this number of times, this minimum number of times. So let's take some example. Here on the left, I have the same sequence database that I have shown to you before. Let's say I set the minimum support to three. That means I want to find all the subsequence that appear in at least three sequences. Then the output will be like this. So I find what we call the sequential patterns. That means the sequence appear at least three times. So for example, A is a sequential pattern because it appears three times. We have at least three sequences that contain A, so exactly three. A followed by C appear three times, and it is also sequential pattern because it is at least three, and so on. So here, this is the input and output what we want to find. It is important to know for this type of problem, there is always only one solution. If you have this database, and this parameter, there is only one solution that we want to find. So maybe you want to know what will happen if we change the minimum support threshold. Let's say we set to four. So I change to four. What will be the result? If we set to four, now we only find three sequential patterns instead of six because now we are more strict we want to find the subsequence appear at least four times instead of at least three so the observation is when we increase the minimum support generally we could find less patterns or the same number and if we decrease the minimum support we can find more patterns if you have a big database Sometimes you can even find millions of patterns and so on. So why the, the problem of sequential pattern mining is interesting? First, because it has many applications. You can analyze what the people buy or the location they visit and so on. But also for the researcher, it is a difficult problem. If you want to design some algorithm to find the solution, okay, let's say you design a simple, a naive algorithm. The naive algorithm will read the database and count the support of all the possible patterns. But it will be inefficient because there are 
so many possibilities in the search space. So for example, you could have some patterns like A, like B, like C, or A and B at the same time, A and C at the same time, A and D together, or A followed by A, A followed by A followed by A, or A followed by A by A by A, and so on, okay? There are so many combinations. So, in the real life, for the big databases, it is hard to find the solution. So we need some efficient algorithms. So the efficient algorithm will find the solution without checking all the possibilities. So to do this, they will use some uh, search space uh, pruning strategy, some strategy to reduce the search space and also some optimization, some good data structure, and so on. So there are many algorithms that can be used for this problem, like GSP, one of the first algorithm, spam, spade, prefix spam, CM spam, and CM spade. So those are some of the most popular. So what is the difference? All of them, they have the same input and the same output, actually. The difference will be in terms of performance because of the optimization, the search strategies, and also the data structure. So the big difference will be the performance in terms of speed or memory, okay? Some algorithm will be faster or will use more or less memory. So if you want to try such algorithm, you can take a look at the SPMF library. It is open source implemented in Java. You can find online and it will give you the, the fast implementation for these, uh, uh, the problem of sequential pattern mining. So to show you a little bit about the performance of such algorithm, here uh, I show you some performance comparison. So here we have a set of algorithms at the bottom for sequential pattern mining. And we have four databases, COSAC, BMS, Snake, and Leviathan. And for these databases, we change the minimum support parameter, and we look at the time, what will happen. In general, if you decrease the minimum support, you will find more patterns, and the algorithms will take more time. Okay. So, and as you can see in this picture, you can see that there can be some huge difference between the speed of the different algorithms. So here, for example, on COSAC, some algorithm take 45 seconds, but another only take maybe two seconds to find the same result. So it is important to use the good algorithm. So how to solve this problem, I will explain in another video. That's all for this video today. Thank you.